Hey y'all, I'm Rylan. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am trying something a little bit different. I have decided to attempt to start doing more video book reviews. Last year when I first started my channel, I did this a few times, but I was not very good at it. So all those videos are no longer on my channel, therefore you cannot find them anywhere, hopefully. Um, and yeah, I stopped doing book reviews. But after over a year of experience writing book reviews on Goodreads, NetGalley, Instagram, etc, etc, I feel as though I am a lot better at talking about the books that I read. So today I'm going to be giving a book review on Hairpin Bridge by Taylor Adams. For those of y'all who don't know, Taylor Adams is a thriller author. I believe he has four books published, but No Exit is his most popular one. Hairpin Bridge was actually just published last month in June, and I have been seeing the book around a lot on Bookstagram. But most of the reviews that I have seen are not super glowing and great reviews. A lot of people seem to not like this one. They seem to prefer No Exit to Hairpin Bridge. So I had to figure out what everyone was talking about. I actually have not read No Exit yet. I do own the book. It is somewhere in this room but I haven't read it yet. The publisher, William Morrow, gifted me this copy last month and it is a beautiful hardback edition. I love it so much. The cover is so creepy. Um, yeah, so I wanted to figure out kind of like why everybody was not really into this one. I saw a lot of two-star reviews. I saw several three-star reviews as well, but not very many four or five-star reviews. So yeah, this book is being read by many, but not always loved. However, I read this book last week and unpopular opinion, I loved this book. Hairpin Bridge for me was five stars. I devoured it in less than one day. I flew through it and yeah, I absolutely loved it. I did also get a digital arc of this book because it was read and now on NetGalley for a short time. So I wrote a review that is both on NetGalley and Goodreads if you want to check it out. I will link it in the description down below. But to actually give a book review of Hairpin Bridge without just saying that I thought it was wonderful, let me start off by giving y'all a very short synopsis that hopefully summarizes the book without giving away any spoilers because this is going to be a spoiler free review. And if I do end up rambling and start giving spoilers, I will make sure to put a warning in the video so people know that there are spoilers coming up in case they haven't read the book yet. Hairpin Bridge is a thriller about twin sisters Lena and Cambry. Three months ago, Cambry supposedly jumped off a bridge and died. This is what the police have told Lena and her family, but Lena doesn't believe it. She thinks that the cops are lying to her. So she spends three months researching and planning and she decides to go out to Montana, I believe, which is where Hairpin Bridge is located. Hairpin Bridge is this old abandoned bridge that is known as the Suicide Bridge because years ago, several other people also jumped off the bridge and died as well. So Lena goes back to Hairpin Bridge and meets with a cop named Raymond Reshevik, who talks about that night with her. He was the one who found her body um, after she jumped off the bridge and Lena and Raymond talk, but Lena does not trust the cop in any way whatsoever. And she is determined to get the truth out of him because she knows that he is lying about what actually happened that night. Hairpin Bridge is very much an isolated thriller and I do think that this is where a lot of people began to have problems with the book because there wasn't a ton of moving around um, because Lena and Reykjavik were on this bridge for the entirety of the story. I think that when you do decide to write a thriller with such an isolated setting, you have to be very careful about keeping the plot moving along, keeping the dialogue going back and forth in a way that isn't boring. I think that it could have been so easy for Taylor Adams to lose his audience because like nothing was happening, um, but I personally thought that in the case of this book, lots of stuff was always happening, whether it be dialogue or arguing or guns being drawn or people coming to the bridge, like driving past and like becoming involved. I just thought that there was so much happening that I didn't care about the fact that we were only really sitting on this bridge. It also helped that this story is written in 
two parts kind of. The first part we have um, Alina and Reykjavik on the bridge in the present time and then we also have the future written in like the past tense because Lena is like telling Cambry's story after she figures out the truth about that night if that timeline made any sense at all so we do have like this kind of back and forth thing and Cambry's chapters are very much action-packed because of what happened to her the night she died and that also kind of helped break up the potential monotony of just being on this bridge for the whole story. Hairpin Bridge is not super long. The book is only like 304 pages. So I would say that for a thriller, this is kind of on the short side. And I do believe that if the book had been any longer, it probably would not have worked the way that I thought it did. I don't know if I've mentioned this already, but I did rate Hairpin Bridge five stars. And even I was a little bit surprised that I rated this book five stars because I give a lot of three and four star reviews and I do like those books, but I don't give five star reviews to like all the books that I read. I rely so heavily on other people's reviews, so I was not expecting to like this one very much because nobody else I had seen liked it very much either. So I wasn't like expecting anything out of this book, I guess. And maybe that played to my advantage because once I started reading this book, I could not put it down. I did listen to the audiobook while reading Hairpin Bridge because I just like doubling up sometimes. And I honestly think that the audiobook helped enhance my experience. I really liked the narrator of the audiobook and would definitely recommend that if you do end up reading Hairpin Bridge, snagging the audiobook if possible because at least I thought that it was really good. When it comes to thrillers, I personally appreciate and honestly expect to see one or many characters who are unreliable, untrustworthy, unlikable, and Hairpin Bridge had it all. I did not trust Lena, I did not trust Reykjavik, I couldn't really trust anybody, and that makes me love a thriller. Honestly, like, that's why I read thrillers, because I love the guessing game of figuring out who did what and what's going on, and I like playing the role of the detective personally. I like it when I make a guess and my guess ends up being wrong. Like I personally love that and I was constantly guessing in this book because I was like oh yeah like I know what happened. Yeah no I didn't know what happened and that is another factor that played into my enjoyment of it because when I make guesses and end up being wrong I'm just kind of like mind blown. And I personally thought that Taylor Adams did a great job with the twists and the turns of this book. Sometimes when I read thrillers I am able to guess like who done it or like whatever like i'm able to guess the plot twist before it actually happens and in the case of those types of books i end up not liking them as much because if i can guess the plot twist then like is it really a plot twist because i'm probably not the only one who guessed as well so i like it sometimes when maybe it's even a little bit like unrealistic when authors just kind of throw in a plot twist and it's huge and like you never could have guessed it and that makes me love a book even more because I love the unpredictability of it. Is unpredictability a word? I don't know what we're gonna pretend it is um, if it's not. Yeah, so I thought that this book was just so full of unlikable and shady people and twists and turns and I didn't know like who to trust. I didn't trust anybody. It is because of thrillers like Hairpin Bridge that I love the genre. I love guessing and I love being wrong in the case of books and you know guessing in fiction and I love just not knowing what's really going on or what the truth is behind a situation. I know that a lot of people have problems with it for whatever reason. I'm not looking at negative reviews of this book at the moment but I can see why people might have problems with just the pacing and like the action of the story, but I do honestly think that if you have any interest in books with unlikable characters that Hairpin Bridge might be the book for you because this book is so heavily focused on characters and like not knowing, you know, like what's really going on between them. And there's so much analyzing that can be done with both of these two characters as like we get insight into their heads and I don't know, I just found it so fascinating. I would personally still recommend checking Hairpin Bridge out, whether you buy a copy of it or borrow from your library or whatever else. I think that this is a really interesting and dark thriller. I know I'm not the only one who loved this book, but my opinion is a little bit unpopular at the moment. So yeah, I personally would recommend checking this book out. I think that Taylor Adams did a wonderful job creating these characters who were so unlikable 
and captivating because they were so unlikable and I couldn't trust them that I just had to figure out what happened in the end and I flew through this book because of that. So I would definitely recommend picking up Hairpin Bridge if you ever get the opportunity or chance to do so. If you love a super quick thriller with lots of interesting dialogue and very fun characters. <laughs> If you have any other recommendations for book reviews you want to see from me, feel free to comment down below. I plan to hopefully do this a little bit more frequently again on my channel like I did last year. Um, not that probably most of y'all would know that because those videos are all gone. But yeah, let me know down below if there are any other books you want to see reviewed by me. And if I've already read the book, then I'll definitely make a video. And if I haven't read the book yet, then I probably will read it eventually. It might just be a little bit. So this is my very first comeback review video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more bookish content. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in another video.